What do Sudoku games, wedding seating plans, and assigning frequencies to radio stations all have in common? They are all related to a well-known math problem connected to maps. A proof of this problem was the very first that relied heavily on a computer. This breakthrough had a huge impact on the fields of mathematics and computer science. But it also ignited decades of debate about the nature of mathematical proofs, the role of computers in the field, and what it means to be a mathematician. The long and winding journey started with a simple question. Imagine you had a blank map and you're a cartographer and you wanted to color the map. So one thing that might be important is that each region have its own color and that no two regions that share a border are the same color. And so the question is, how many colors will you need? It sounds like a simple question. How hard can it be? The history surrounding it is without a doubt one of my favorite episodes in the history of math. One might think that this problem came from cartographers, but there's really no evidence that map makers have been trying to minimize the number of colors. Um, this really came from mathematicians. In 1852, Augustus de Morgan, a professor at University College London, brought up the map coloring problem in a letter to his friend and the mathematician Sir William Rowan Hamilton. It was de Morgan's former student, Francis Guthrie, who first posed the question. Guthrie had discovered that he could shade in all the counties in the United Kingdom with only four colors. He wondered if this was the case for all maps, regardless of the shape, size, and complexity. The simplicity of the four-color theorem, that only four colors are needed to color any map, tantalized mathematicians. However, early attempts to prove it failed. 27 years later, the first widely accepted proof came from the British barrister, Alfred Kemp. His proof tackled the problem by analyzing how countries connect to each other. To understand how Kemp and other mathematicians looked at this problem, it helps to strip away all unnecessary information. We can replace each state by a vertex, a single point. And if two regions neighbor each other, we can draw a line segment between those two vertices. Uh, that's called an edge. And so we turn this from a map coloring problem into a graph coloring problem. Can we color the graph with four or fewer colors so that neighboring vertices are not the same color? This field of math is known as graph theory, and it helps mathematicians study the relationships between objects. Converting maps to planar graphs, graphs that can be drawn in a flat plane with no edges crossing, makes the four color theorem easier to analyze it turns out that two maps of different sizes and shapes can be represented by equivalent planar graphs. All that matters is how the regions are connected and related to one another. Focusing on only the connections within the maps helped Kemp discover key features that all maps share. Regardless of how complicated, all maps have at least one region that has zero, one, two, three, four, or five neighbors. This is known as an unavoidable set. Once Kemp had identified an unavoidable set, he set out to prove the four-color theorem. To understand a surprising step of his method, first assume that the theorem is false. Kemp's proof is elegant and clever. Suppose we cannot color every map with four or fewer colors, then there must be a smallest such map. If the four-color theorem is false, there must be a graph that requires at least five colors. This is known as a minimal counterexample. Kemp wanted to show that he could color this graph with four colors. If he could, then a minimal counterexample must not exist in the first place. First, he found one vertex in that graph that had five or fewer neighbors and removed it. Then he colored the graph with only four colors because the graph is smaller than the minimal counterexample. Next, he put the removed vertex back in. If its neighbors show three or fewer colors, there is a color remaining to color the vertex. But if the neighbors have all four colors, then there is a problem. Kemp then created a method for recoloring the graph to free up a color for the remaining vertex. This allowed him to recolor it with four colors again. This showed that a minimal counterexample, the smallest possible graph that needs five colors, doesn't exist. That meant the four color theorem must be true. Unfortunately, 11 years later, an error was discovered. Mathematician Percy Haywood found that Kemp's recoloring technique worked when the removed vertex had four or fewer neighbors, but not when it had five. 
When you read Haywood's writing, you could tell he feels bad for having discovered this flaw. So the theorem was a conjecture once again. For the next half century, mathematicians continued trying to prove the four-color theorem. They soon realized that any solution would require a two-pronged approach. First, they needed to expand Kemp's unavoidable set. This is a collection of configurations that if you have any graph, then one of these configurations must appear in your graph. The more they looked, the bigger and more complicated these sets became. The second task was to prove that these configurations were reducible, meaning that if a graph contained one of these configurations, then it could be colored with four or fewer colors. And proving that these configurations were reducible also was harder and harder. Fortunately, by the end of the 1960s and early 70s, computers were becoming faster and more powerful, opening the door to new possibilities. Mathematicians realized that some of this work, which was very tedious and time-consuming to do by hand, might be able to be accomplished by the use of these new computers. At this point, there were several teams trying to solve the four-color problem using computers. At the University of Illinois, Wolfgang Hocken, a well-known topologist, teamed up with Kenneth Appel, a mathematics professor and one of the only people who knew how to use the university's new high-powered computers. In 1976, after about six months of work and more than a thousand hours of computer time, they proved the four-color theorem. Hocken and Appel found an unavoidable set consisting of 1,936 reducible configurations. Every map has to have at least one of these configurations, and any map that does can be colored with four or fewer colors. Far too many for any human or even team of humans to check by hand. At the time, computers were primarily used to perform mathematical calculations and not for what was considered the human endeavor of solving proofs in theoretical mathematics. As the first major computer-assisted proof, the four-color theorem raised questions about what actually counts as a proof. Some researchers even questioned the legitimacy of Appel and Hawkins' method. But if we put ourselves back in the mindset of 1970s mathematicians, this idea that one of the most famous unsolved problems in history was solved by over a thousand hours of computer time that seems sort of anticlimactic or not playing by the rules, these unstated rules that mathematicians have. Some people thought that if a human couldn't read it from end to end, then it wasn't a legitimate proof. But as time progressed, the use of computers in theoretical mathematics became more accepted. As the younger generation got older, this newfangled technology just became the way that we did math. And uh, today we're much more comfortable with it than we were at that time. Today, mathematicians often use computers to check proofs of theorems or even to generate proofs themselves. This fruitful and continuing marriage of mathematics and computers all started with the seemingly simple question of how to color maps. Through the study of this problem, mathematics was created and advanced in so many ways. This was one of the major drivers of the study of graph theory or network theory. The ideas behind these theories are now ubiquitous. We use graphs and networks to describe the way disease spreads and the way computer networks are connected. While the four-color theorem might seem like a mathematical curiosity, it really did push the boundaries of mathematics forward. Thank you.